Hi everyone, it's Autumn from Sew Paper Paint, and today let's make a card with our gel prints. So we're going to be using the new Jofi stamp set, J-O-F-Y-1-1-1 by Paper Artsy. I'm just so in love with these um, blossoms. And we'll be playing with our 6 by 6 inch um, gel, gel press printing plate. And Top Flight Stamp sells this really great small brayer. It's perfect for, especially for this size, though I use it even with a larger plate. And then we are going to start out with a little bit of slimed Paper Artsy Fresco Finish Acrylic. Let me grab a white because I should have done that earlier. We also have Captain Peacock bubblegum and the white I've just grabbed is Cloud Nine. So you can see I have some leftover stenciling from the last time I played and I'm, I love that. that. I advise everyone never clean your plate and that will give you all kinds of great texture um, as you continue to print. So I'm just going to add a little white to tone down this slime to just pretty bright green. And I'm just sort of covering some sections here and there. Now, I never do this, but you certainly can. Um, well, I shouldn't say never. I don't often do this, but you certainly can clean your um, brayer as you go by rubbing onto a book. I just take an old book where I use the covers to make a journal and use it just to brayer off. I, um, personally, I just let the paint build up. It doesn't bother me, but I know everybody's different. So that. That's one good option. And this way you can print at your table. You're not making a huge mess. Make a habit of keeping the brayer upside down so you don't get paint anywhere. And you'll be good to go. So now I'm just blending in a little bit of the Captain Peacock, the beautiful turquoise blue. Just, you know, you can blend onto the, on the plate. Um, if the paint is still wet, it will blend. Now, you can also layer um, dry dry layers, and then that will give you really great buildup. So let me take one of these pieces of my book page, and I'm just going to use that to blot away in the center. <clears throat> Excuse me, sure has some water. And then the paint will remain and give me a really nice background. So I've cut uh, some sheets of Bristol, a little bit smaller. Let's see, these are five and a half inch square and they're gonna be perfect for printing on the six by six plate. And I'm just gonna, <clears throat> I'm actually gonna save this. Look how cool this is. So that'll go <laughs> in something in the future. But just for the edge around the paper, I'm going to add this piece of paper and just press. <clears throat> okay, and then I'm going to lift. Now, I think what's happened is my paint has dried. So I'm not going to freak out. What we're going to do now is add a some cloud nine and that's going to let us lift that dried paint. So we actually might get some better texture because this part was lifted. It might give us a little bit more of a random pattern. So don't, don't freak out when you're printing, just roll with it. And the best advice I can give you, first of all, besides not cleaning your plate is to just keep printing. Uh, you can certainly print over the things that you pull and you don't like. So, just gonna use that just to blot away. <clears throat> and, no, 
number two. Now see how some of that paint that was left on my plate has picked up? That's what we want. That's what makes the gel print a really fun thing to play with. And even see how I sort of got that circle pattern offset when I pulled the dry print. I mean, I think that's wonderful. So now we have a really good piece to to start and I say let's keep going. We had some of that pink left so let's add in a little more pink. Oh, let me shake. And tone that. I'm going to tone that down so it will coordinate better uh, with just a little bit more cloud nine. I just do that straight onto the plate so I'm, I'm really not making a mess. I mean I might get a little paint on my hand but other than that I'm, I'm not making a huge mess here, guys. So, you know, definitely play. <laughs> you don't need a lot of room. You don't need a lot of materials. And I don't even clean my stencils. I just keep going. You can always worry about that if it becomes a problem down the road. Okay. And I'm going to do that brayer off just a little. And now, <clears throat> I'm going to lift some random spots just lift no stencil just lifting and then I'm going to use my first print just to help this dry because I want to add another color but I don't want to blend I want to layer so if you want to layer and not blend you need dry paint um, and then and then your next color. So now let's see if we can get some of this peacock to show through in the gaps. And and actually let me um try to I keep I want to keep this tone down just a little bit so we can have a lighter background for our card. See, I'm able <clears throat> to blend the peacock and the white. I just, but it's not blending into purple. I mean, the pink, it's not making purple because that layer is dry underneath. Okay. So let's see, I had cut several, um, here we go, several of these squares. See how that pink layer comes through? Gives us a different, a fun a layering. And then now I'm going to add some green and let this dried pink, white, and blue come through on the green. Now, if I didn't like this print, which I think I do, I mean, and I could definitely build up um, the color with stamping and stenciling. If I didn't like it, I would just print on the back of it. Okay. <clears throat> So now we've got a really nice range, some white going on, some blue, some green, and I think I'm still missing a little bit of pink because I want to have lots of options for stamping these fla the flower stamp set. <clears throat> this might be a little too much pink. <laughs> and if, if you do get too much pink, you, there you go, just can brayer off onto that that book or if you, I mean if you get too much paint because you, you don't want too thick of a layer of paint and so 
I'm thinking I'm loving the, the polka dot theme. So why not grab a different stencil? Here we go. This one is by Sarah Newman. And let's lift some of that color just in the gaps. And I can save that for some collage fodder for a journal page in the future. And now I'm gonna let these this outline of the dots dry. And let's go over with a little more cloud nine. It wasn't completely dry, so it did turn a little bit light pink. But just for the sake of time, I'm just going to go with it. If you really wanted a heavy contrast, definitely let that dry completely. And, excuse me, I'm going to blot those edges again. And there, gives us a different colorway and still tying in some of that blue and green. So now we have some papers that we can use for stamping these gorgeous flowers. So let me get that done and then I'll be right back with you. Okay, now I've stamped my images onto my gel printed paper and cut things out. I used Versafine ink uh, because you get a very nice crisp image. My pad's pretty good and juicy. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I fussy cut everything out and I wanted to say when you do your stamping onto this paper, um, the reason we use the paper artsy fresco pa paint is how well it works with um, ink pads. And, but you do need to let it dry and I typically heat set my images until you see it go from shiny to more of a flat finish. So I used the stamp, I stamped the one flower from our main set twice and that that's this this one without the text and then I turned it upside down and stamped a stem for the larger flower. So I'm going to, let's see, I lost my flowers. Here we go. This is going to be my main flower. I'm going to add some doodling with my Costco paint pens because the colors are just going to work really well with what, um, what we've done so far. So I'm just going to add a few highlights or shadows I should say not being um, too particular or following any sort of pattern just want to add a little bit of color um, maybe I'll even add a few dots here and there just because dots are fun and then you can always go in with white and add some detail to this sort of checkerboard pattern. And that just will make things pop a little bit more. You could also do Distress Ink Watercolor works very well over um, printed paper with the when you use the fresco paint. It, sorry, I'm having an issue with this particular pen. Let's hope I don't ruin my flower, but I did. I did get a lot of stamping from from the sheets, so no problems. 
and then I'm just going to add some highlights to these small blossoms I've cut. Just easy um, dots and lines here. And then, let's see, I'm going to do some pink on the green just for contrast. Okay, and when I'm happy with that, actually I do want to add a few dots into this piece that's going to be the center of my pink flower, just so all the colors play together. So now, and I, I made a little banner by stamping this happy birthday sentiment here. Um, and that's from Jofi, um, set 14, J-O-F-Y-1-4. I, I just want to build a stash of birthday cards. I feel like every time there's a birthday, I don't have enough cards. So now I'm simply going to use some foam dots. I, and the, the, the good thing about, um doing this card this way it's going to give me really good dimension but it's very easy to cut out these um shapes as opposed to trying to cut out the the stem and all that stuff so we just stamp the background and then pop out the focal elements and so yeah okay just gonna go around and pop everything up okay so I've alternated the color just for fun. I think it'll it'll be a little bit unique and see how much variation there is. See, this one picked up more pink. Uh, so it's just a lot of fun to skip it up. Now I'm gonna curl my petals just a little bit using my bone folder. And I'm just gonna pull my thumb towards the edge. And that will just leave a little bit of dimension. And let's see, I'm going to add my center. Little puzzle here. <laughs> let's see, that's not right. Here we go. Okay. And then this can layer over that side. So give another one dot. And now I wanted to point out that I am going over the edge of the card, but this panel is five and a half inch square. So my finished card will be larger. And I like the way it looks to sort of extend that boundary. So now I've got my fun sentiment. I can decide where that's going to go. And I can come back in and add a little bit of detail with the paint pen. That's always fun. And maybe even add a little more color if I like into the design. There. So, a fun, easy way to take a few gel prints and use them for a card. Now I've got all of these backgrounds and also this really cool piece that I can make another card. So I hope that encourages you guys to play with your gel um, plate today and get out your Jofi flowers and have a good time. Thanks for watching.